Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you, Eve. Yes, or Eva, whatever you want to call me. Eva. Yes. So, I'm here this morning at this wonderful store. Tell me about it. It's Blackbird. Yes. So, um, I would describe it as uh, Victoriana Curiosities and Apothecary. Um, I have some things in here that are lean towards the steampunk, like mm -hmm. costuming stuff. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, um, the space's intention is to um, have lots of things that are connected to that era. So I have things that you would find, like um, things that you would collect, like stones and crystals. And, and then I have my herbs and my tea section. So it's, it's, everything is curated by me, meaning I kind of, I pick exactly what I think I, my customers want. Um, I take requests, those kind of things. So. Like the time I was looking for candles. Yes, oh, I left out <laughs> candles, yes. Um, a lot of things in here we make ourselves. I make myself um, and everyone that makes things that are in here are all local people. So I really pride myself on trying to keep, um, make it uh, locally sourced. And that's what I love about <clears> it. <throat> Just walking down the street and I found you and then... We connected, and I was just like, wow, I love this store. It just has a great vibe. Yeah, I walk in, it's just everything I'm looking for. Um, yeah, medicines, all different kinds of medicine. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it really depends on what you're looking for. <laughs> and how long have you had this shop? I've been here for two and a half years, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's 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 growing. Yeah. Yeah. Even during this whole situation that we're experiencing, you're just hanging in here. I am. Yeah. I um I this is my my soul work right now. I feel like I'm I'm doing where I am where I'm supposed to be and the thought of walking away from the space during this COVID uh, pandemic is not for yeah. me doesn't feel like it's an option like I'm making mm -hmm. I'm doing everything I can to make it work so that's fantastic yeah that's really great um what inspired the name of your shop oh blackbird um you know it was it's a combo of things of why I picked it um I have always had a connection to crows and ravens and I felt like the more authentic I was with my space and the things that I appreciate and instead of trying to be more like, oh, what's the word I'm looking like? Advertising my business is something, um, a kitschy, catchy kind of name. I'm like, I just really need to stick with my authentic self. I like that. And so I thought, okay, well, I don't want it to be too heavy because a lot of people associate crows and ravens with death. I do not. No. So um, I thought a more safe word and also more like a broader association, it, Blackbird is how mm -hmm. I came up with it. Mm -hmm. um, for me, crows and ravens kind of encompass family and a social circle and they're really intelligent. They're really um, protective of each other and I feel like they're a lot smarter than most people realize that they are. So to me, there's there's a lot of layers of mm -hmm. Blackbird for me. I can see that. It's funny because for whatever reason, the name of your shop is Blackbird, but when I wrote in my phone, I put Raven. Ah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> then I kept, kept walking by, I'm like, there's doesn't say Raven. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was like, that's interesting how it correlated in my brain. Yes, and how you, yes, and you put it down on your phone. I love, I actually love that. That's really cool. I've had other people say the same thing about the crow store. Oh, we got to go to the crow store. I'm like, okay, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> exactly, and how it, it, it resonates different in each person. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I stuck with it, too, because it also is very curious. Like, well, it doesn't have, it just says Blackbird. It doesn't have Blackbird Apothecary or anything attached mm -hmm. to it. It's like, it's easy. well, what goes on in there? Mm -hmm. You know, so. Curious. Yes. Curious minds want to know. Yes. <laughs> so I have a question. Um, did friends and family have a stigma or think um, you were very, very brave to do something like this, to take this on? Um majority of my friends and a few of my family were very supportive with me doing this they kind of were like yeah of course you you would do that that's that's kind of in your your vein of 
possibilities and, and um, what's the word I'm looking for, the vein of um, potential. And um, I had family members also be, my, including my, ma- my mother, <laughs> be very discouraged, um, discouraging to me about how hard retail is, um, how I have a, a master's degree and how the heck does this res- work with the fact that I'm opening a retail space? That's for people that don't have options. I mean, that's the perception in a lot of ways, which I think is not true. No, I don't know. Um, so I have... The people that I have around me closest have been very, very supportive, and it's been amazing. So I'm sure it helps just having, you know, the wellness, the roundness of it. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Really good. Any advice for other women entrepreneurs um, in order to follow their dreams? Advice for success on their journey? Being a woman. Oh boy. Um, I think. You've got to be really clear as to what you want to do okay. and be really specific. Um, you can have a, a vision of what you want, but you, you need to make sure that you're able to lay out how that's going to play out. Like even if after you get open or whatever business that you start, what's the next step to keep the things rolling and and keep a consistent um, momentum okay. you know um, another thing is self-care mm-hmm. I've learned that the hard way it's been really really hard in the last two years because I um, have only worked in this I don't have any other people working for me mm-hmm. most of the time mm-hmm. if I'm sick or I have an important family uh, event I, I get covered for a store but for the most part, I'm in here six days a week. Wow. I was in here six days a week. Um, and don't burn your candle at both ends, I think, is is thing. Set your priorities, too, before you go into it. Because mm-hmm. I was really clear on what how I wanted this to play out for my family in regards to the time I spent with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I allowed myself to kind of get sucked into the fears of, making the store successful Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah and with all this COVID with everybody you know everything having to come to a screaming halt it actually gave me the space to kind of reassess Mm -hmm. and my advice would be to any business owners women business owners is take that time we may not get another chance you know like this uh, COVID where it just stopped the world Mm -hmm. but we can stop our world for a moment and reassess like our our priorities is what it is and um, I went into this very clear and got very distracted and very stressed and got in my head Mm -hmm. and um, it's very easy to do and I, I hope that anybody seeing this hearing this would learn that that it's so easy to slip into that Mm -hmm. and to reel yourself back and go okay no I can't you can't make decisions in fear with fear so I think a lot of people um have done that at the especially at the beginning of COVID and then yeah we have to realize we don't want to get sick we want to stay healthy and we want our minds to be healthy and Yeah. yeah we let that somehow we have to kind of let it go and on the back burner and we know it's there but we just want to keep going forward yeah like you said, reevaluate what's important, yeah. our priorities. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, with business, it's probably like what we eat, staying healthy, everything, family, like you mentioned. It's, it's juggling everything constantly, um, especially if you have, if you're really passionate about being in your space and or what you're doing. That's really hard. Like I told somebody the other day that the reason why I think I was able to work the hours that I was able to work was because I love being in my space and mm-hmm. I love my customers and mm-hmm. I love I, the way it feels in here. And mm-hmm. so, you know, if I didn't have my husband and my daughter, mm-hmm. my son at home, uh-huh. I probably would be in here a lot more. Uh-huh. <laughs> I would spend a lot of my time here. So that's so nice. How old are your children? So I have an eight-year-old daughter wow. and I have a 20-year-old, 21-year-old son <laughs> who um, just recently moved back home and he's getting back on his feet again. So oh, That's sweet. Yeah. It's nice to have them all together. It, it is. It's really good. <laughs> that kind of goes with my next question saying you are a mother. Yes. And a wife. Yes. <laughs> and I think you might have already um, 
answer this question, but it was any information, informative advice um, you would like to give to others on this type of venture, but you pretty much stated yeah, all that. I, I would um, emphasize self-care. I whole, like that. A whole lot. I like that. Yeah. Even if you have to wake up an hour earlier. <laughs> or or sleep in an hour yeah, longer. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it really depends on what that looks like for you. Um, yeah, for me, right now, um, sleep has been the restorative thing for me. Nice. Getting my sleep has been really important. So. Heals everything. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Something to be said about that. Mm -hmm. When people say, I need a vacation, they're basically saying, I need some rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very true. <laughs> Okay, what's been the most challenging part of your journey? And again, you might have already clarified. Yes, keeping balanced. Okay. I think that's been, and most people say, oh, the money or, um, you know, working out the details of the store. Um, it, it hasn't been that that's actually come easy. It's me trying to maintain balance. Nice. Yeah. And this next question is kind of cute and maybe make you laugh or, you know, maybe not. Um, what is your spirit animal if you have one or any uh, any books you recommend to others? Ooh, um, spirit animal, um, crow, crow what? ravens. I've had so many experiences with them. Um, when I'm here in California, most of the time it's crows. When I'm up in other places like Northern California or in the Southwest, there's a lot of ravens out there. So uh, it doesn't matter where I am, but they tend to find me and we like to have Great. <laughs> I have a yeah an interesting story I have to share with you after. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> um, so, any words of woman wisdom? Hmm. Yeah, I think we tend to walk around carrying the world on our shoulders all the time. Most of us do. Yes, I agree. Um, I feel like we are trained early on as little girls that we have to. Yes, we we can have we can be married. We can have children. We we're the caretakers. I mean, we don't have to be, but there's that that expectation of all those things. But then we also are intelligent, and we have our own passions, our own dreams, mm -hmm. and so we're constantly maneuvering through what does that look like for ourselves individually and one of those things is like we feel very responsible I feel very and I know a lot yes. of my friends feel very responsible for everybody around them mm -hmm. and we need to stop <laughs> we need to stop doing that and 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 figure out what we can do and what we can take on and then be able to release and not it as, as baggage that's so unnecessary for us and 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 having and another part of that too is feeling like we um, have to do everything all the time it's so in us you know like I don't know if we're born with it we're trained that way as children but it, I know what you're saying it's like I always when I go for a massage or something I get this tightness and like you said most of us do it's almost like we have to retrain our brain, our minds, both mm -hmm. hearts, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. And just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and finding that that inner, that love for ourselves. The, I always say the little girl, like take care of that little girl. I love it. Um, because of my own experiences, I feel like saying it that way works really well for me. Um, getting to that point where I can say... You know, that's I'm doing my self care via my small child that didn't get the the care that she needed, mm -hmm. um, and so addressing that is really important. So now that you brought that up, yeah, it wasn't my next question, but I'm just going to go into it. Yeah, was this like one of your birthday dreams? Because it's all about making our birthday dreams, our wishes come true. <laughs> like having the store, yes. Oh my goodness! You know what's really funny is I. When I was a little girl, I played store, mm -hmm. I played um, teacher, school, I played private investigator, mm -hmm. uh, I, play, I played bank, and so as I got older, all those things sounded really fascinating. Um, I know that sounds funny, but, um, but no, it wasn't something that I thought it would be 
possible. I had this perception of people that own stores come from have a lot of money mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. come from a place with a lot of money and they have a lot of support for around them have a lot of money which is true in a lot of cases not always yeah um but that was my perception and so it was like that was unattainable for me I mean I mm -hmm. grew up you know with a mom who was on welfare mm -hmm. for most of my most of my childhood mm -hmm. um, and so for me my dreams were graduate from college which is what I did I decided I wanted to be, become a teacher the reason why I went in that direction is a whole other interview yeah. mm -hmm. um, but that was safe that was uh, I can have a regular job I'll have money and I won't steady have to income. it's steady income it was those things and then as that has changed as I was getting my degree Teachers were getting laid off. Mm -hmm. um, the dynamics of what that looked like started to change for the support in the classroom. Um, I actually went out of college into archaeology, so I was oh, wow. outside wow. doing a lot of work, which was really amazing because I was in the dirt. I love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. You know, being a lot of times we were out hiking out in the uh, backcountry and stuff nice. like that. So um, it wasn't on my radar until I started working in the space. It was previously a store called The Labyrinth. Okay. And my friend Liz wanted me to kind of be her wingman in a way of like, I worked, I had, my daughter was two years old. I kind of felt like I needed to get out of the house a day or so, make mm -hmm. a little bit of money here and there um, to help my husband and came into the space and worked for her. And in the three years that she was in here, totally fell in love with every aspect of it. I was making Great. jewelry. I was making candles. Wow. I was... Um, sewing, um, I was repairing jewelry. I mean, I just all these things that I just do for like fun or just crafty. Mm -hmm. I was doing in here, and wow. and that was just like, oh, <laughs> this is cool. So when she didn't want to renew the lease and um, was going to move on to other things, she just couldn't get the store up and going the way she wanted it to. Um, it like hit me with a big bolt of lightning aha moment of oh this is the next thing I had done a lot of work previous to taking over the space um going what what is what am I supposed to be doing right now when mm -hmm. am I mm -hmm. where am I supposed to go mm -hmm. um, my daughter had started kindergarten my yeah. son had gone off to college so there was this big space for me to mm -hmm. be doing something and yeah. I was really kind of going I'm floundering here I don't know what this is mm -hmm. and the moment she said that that's what was going to happen. The wheels started turning, and I talked to friends and stuff, and everyone was just like, well, yeah, duh. <laughs> we watch you in there, and you're just blossoming, and you're excited, and you love every aspect of it. Why, why wouldn't you think you could do that? And then that became a whole thing of um, the dream, and then being on board with knowing that I can do it. Mm -hmm. Like I felt the the universe or whatever was moving things along for me, I had to be okay with it because in a lot of places in my head it was like I wasn't capable of doing like that. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be fun. But who who do I think I am that I could do something like this? It's kind of like what you said earlier about being clear with your vision, and you kind of you were clear. Yeah. You decided. Yeah. I had to decide that and and just jump off the cliff. It was like I had to jump off the cliff and, and, and just do it. And then, of course, it's a lot of hard work, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. but you already had the experience. Yeah. And you knew about the customers, et yeah. cetera. So, yeah. I love it. It made, it made a lot of sense. You had to just be brave. Like you said, jump off the cliff. Yeah. <laughs> just, just do it. Great metaphor. I yeah. love it. Um. Did you tell me you grew up in a Catholic household? No. I grew okay. up in a very fundamental Christian household. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Got it. Heavy. Okay, got very it. Very heavy, yes. So any blocks or stigmas from your family, and you might have stated a little bit before, yeah. and or friends from the past even. Yeah. During that um, time. I had walked away from the, the belief system and the religion about, uh, I would say, about 10 years prior to having the okay. store. So a lot of the, the friends connected to that have, have gone away. Okay. Um, but just because I'm not in the space, I'm not in religion, 
doesn't mean that the the patterns the um, I would say the brainwashing aspect of things um, has not continued to follow me um, I'm constantly doing work as to what my intuition is saying about things mm -hmm. and not a pre-programmed idea of how something is I love it and it's been now since I've broken away from that a lifelong journey of learning to listen to my my intuition your inner your inner my, voice my inner voice because part of the aspects of the belief system was you don't listen to that because we are sinful mm -hmm. and that we are we don't know what we're doing because mm -hmm. we're broken mm -hmm. and we need a higher being God to tell us what to do and, and I don't know mm -hmm. about you, but I believe that all the answers are within. We just have to listen and ask. <laughs> I do, very much so. And I uh, really feel that that's really important for people to do in any shape or form where they're at in their life and what decisions they're trying to make is to really sit with it and for a long time. Like, take the time, have the, those quiet moments sit in silence, meditation, those kind of things, um, can, I think can really bring you back to mm -hmm. a healthy place of decision making, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. you know. And this proves it. I mean, you're standing on your own two <laughs> feet, <laughs> and you have a great support. I do. It sounds, husband, children. I do. Fa friends, <laughs> family. Yeah. yeah, it's all working out. Once you make that move, that bold move. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's great. Um, any special item, any specialty, um, let's see, of any kind, something in your shop that um, that you do better than others that you believe? And you yeah. kind of mentioned one thing. I know that you do um, have local. Yes. So I do. I have everything locally sourced. Mm -hmm. um, but when I came in here, one of my goals was to start making my own candles. Yes. And. I have been having a lot of fun with that, and I feel I, I'm I'm all about the the woo woo, and so for me, Great. I, I, I <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm doing that, I put a lot of love and a lot of energy and whatever the specialization of the candle. I'm working with the herbs with those and the essential oils and that kind of stuff, and so. I feel like those candles are a little, every time is a little bit of me trying to help somebody on their next path or whatever mm -hmm. direction they're going, mm -hmm. whether it's self-care, self-love, or protection from some of the negativity in their life or around them. Um, house blessing, that's another one of the candles that a lot of my customers really love. Um, and so there's this aspect of me that, uh, my energy that I put into those each time I make a batch of them, so... I know personally, I love them. I mean, even during the COVID, I'm calling you up, right? Yes, Would you mind I making love this it. Candle? <laughs> yes, no, I love. I love the that smell. And what I think is so cool is that um, you kind of inspired me even more so because we we're reusing your your jars again, yes. and and that's I think amazing. And that's another thing where I feel like I'm I'm starting to do a little bit more pivot to what I have envisioned the space to be, which is respecting nature. Um, and our connection to it. And mm -hmm. one of the things is kind of em emphasizing um, the reduce, reuse, recycle mm -hmm. culture. And nice. so, um, so you've got, you know, reusing your bottles. Yeah. Um, my friend Brittany is now making for the store. Um, she reuses her cat food tins. Uh -huh. And we're making candles with those now. Uh -huh. So little bits at a time. That's fantastic. Like, yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah, I'm glad that you're open to this. Yes, I am. I'm always trying to improve. So. <laughs> That's great. Any coming events that you recommend our listeners to check back and participate? I, uh, because of COVID, I don't have a whole lot going out long in here as I had before. But I do have um, a couple of uh, people that do tarot card readings and oracle mm -hmm. card readings. Mm -hmm. Uh, attached to the space and they have events that they run via Zoom. Okay. Um, and so if you go on to the actual website of the business, 
um, there'll be uh, a link in there for events, and so you check in that. Um, and, and what's your website? It's blackbirdlamesa.com. Blackbirdlamesa.com. That's very easy. Yes. Yeah, I try to keep nice. everything very straight and consistent. And you can also order yes anything that's in the store online. Pretty much. You can do order anything that's in the store online. I do have a Shopify page, which is linked to the website. Okay. Um, so I have things... Um, on there. I don't have everything that's in the store on there, but literally if um, you go through pictures and you find something that you like, oh, yeah. call email. me or email me. You can even text me. The phone number that I have on there is one that's a direct line. So nice. people can get a hold of me if you I find know. something you like. I have to pick up something today so don't let me forget. Okay. I have those little charcoals, but I need to put the resin resins yes, on the resin. Yes. Oh, I need to, yes. yes. <laughs> okay. What are some unexpected situations again you might have said in oh in following your dreams that you did not part anticipate okay and how did you handle the situation mm. Mm. <laughs> that's a tricky question um and whatever comes to mind you know that's helpful i didn't anticipate having to be closed for two months <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for COVID. I mean, that's the biggest one right now that comes up and it's the most real. Yes. Because it's, real. it's still happening. Yes. Um, and maneuvering. So right in February, um, actually going into January and February of this year, I was really excited. I could feel like my business was having some great momentum. Mm -hmm. And I had events lined up. Mm -hmm. And I already had people like signing up for them, that Fantastic. kind of stuff. And yeah. so it was, I was getting excited for 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And so it was really, it was like a gut punch yeah. to say everything shuts down. You can't be in your space and all that, all the mandates. Um, but... Um, yeah, so I'm still working through the the unexpected that happened and seeing how this is all going to eventually play out. I, um, like I said, doing a lot of self work on the time down, and um, we'll see how it goes. But uh, but I still admire that Thank quality you. in you. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, I. Uh, and and. I just think you're a great role model for just women in general, people in general, and especially your children. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you're thank welcome. you. Yeah, I don't. If I, it's so funny. I don't see myself as that. I see somebody who's just kind of walking down the path and going along the way. Hey, you got this. Hey, <laughs> you got. You'll figure it out. Hey, you're gonna be okay. You know. And if I have a story to share or make someone feel better or give them a new tool to deal, you know, help them with something. That's that's kind of what I do. So it's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Any particular spiritual cards um, or herbs that you want to talk about and share? Ooh, um, I work with a set of cards. I have them put away right now. Okay. They're a set of oracle cards, but they have um, beautiful pictures of uh, different uh, landscapes. Yes. And places all over the United States. Oh, wow. I guess they have some also from other places too, but because there's a picture of Stonehenge and Machu oh, wow. Picchu and stuff. Yeah. But they're beautiful, wide screen uh, pictures of places that are just, it's just fantastic. Anyways, the Oracle cards, each one of them, they have a word that represents the card. So it'd be courage or uh -huh. um, happiness or self healing, all these kind of things. Nice. And. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say necessarily that oh these are cards that people themselves need to get they are beautiful and they can but I think having any cards any kind of oracle cards um, tarot cards are really beneficial when trying to tap into what your your higher self mm -hmm. and the messages that you need to mm -hmm. receive for yourself so mm -hmm. um, I always tell my customers to um, look through the cards and if something doesn't really jump at them then that's not for them but if they open up a deck and they go oh my gosh that's the imagery is beautiful and I'm really mm -hmm. resonating with this and it's like okay we'll work with that and see how you do with it so mm, it's nice I'm gonna have to look at those after yes words and pick a card <laughs> yeah. well thank you so much for your time you're welcome I really appreciate it and um you're right here on La Mesa Boulevard I am and online as well, so people can who can't come to your shop, they and they're hearing us from wherever they are in the world. Yeah, um, 
You can mail. Yes. Even overseas, possibly. Yes. If yeah. it makes yeah, it that far. <laughs> yes. If, 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 if we'll get to you, I can send it. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Mm-hmm.